after game here today against Brown Fort and Christian Academy. Kind of tune up to get ready for Jefferson, but some other things on the line as well today. Yeah, I think uh, we haven't played since Friday, so we have the availability with not playing all our regular season games to to play a tune-up game, so to say, today. Uh, so I thought we needed to play a baseball game today. And you mentioned to us off air there's some other things that you could get uh, done today, uh, including the record for most wins in a regular season. So not that that's necessarily you know your main focus or anything like that, but obviously now you're going for a win and, and you have an extra game to get an opportunity to do so. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, so in 1983, the SSAC went to a, you could play 30, only 32 games. Prior to that, you could play unlimited. Uh, so the 2011 team won 30 games. If we're fortunate enough to win tonight, that'll be 31, and that would that would give us a record. So you know that's pretty cool, and I think the kids are excited about that. Focus on the uh, season in its entirety. Obviously, it's been a great one uh, for your program, as you said. Currently sitting at 30 wins, two losses, getting the section championship already. Just talk a little bit about the guys along the way and how much it's meant to your program to have such a special year. Yeah, it's definitely been special. I mean, we haven't won anything yet. Um, we have a long way to go and a tough opponent in Jefferson ahead of us next week. But I think I think at times you need to sit back and reflect and kind of look where we've we've came in, in seven years. We've won the sectional four out of six years. Uh, the one year was canceled because of COVID. And and when you look at this, this year in this group, I think we have nine special seniors and we have a bunch of underclassmen that contribute. And just credit to them, man. I mean... They have just just bought into everything that we've been trying to get them to buy into all year long, and you know just a, just a special group. And and I I'm a, can assure you they're not ready for it to be over yet. I think one thing that also stands out about your team is you guys haven't been, I guess, complacent with winning. And even when you face a challenge like Hedges will give you some really tough games, you still found a way to grind it out and win, even when things weren't clicking for the team. What do you think that? that uh, I guess you could call it a series if you want to say of games uh, in sectionals does for your team preparing you going forward well it definitely challenged us I mean you got to give credit to Hedgesville they gave us uh, two very good games there and fortunately enough we were able to win both of them in walk off fashion so I think it I think it proved that to our guys that that we can win uh, in multiple ways you know we've been fortunate enough to win you know a lot of games by a lot of runs and been kind of you know coasting a little bit so f- that challenge that Hedgesville gave us I think is good uh, not good for my blood pressure and my health but uh, yeah I just think it's good for the team to know that they can win in those in those situations if needed. Coach Byler you mentioned uh, today you scheduled the game as a time for your team to get back out on the ball field something that they haven't done since uh, Friday but what have been some things this week that you've been able to do even with the rough weather that we've experienced in gearing up for regionals next week well we gave we gave them uh saturday off and then we practiced monday and we but monday was nice we were able to get on the field and do some one field bp and work on some base running um didn't think our base running was that great in the sectional we were able to work on some bunting i didn't think that we got bunts down and moved guys over like we kind of had all year and then we gave him Tuesday off, and yesterday the weather was kind of crappy, so we hit inside. But it's it's beautiful out there today, and we're just looking forward to getting back on the baseball field and you know just getting the game in today. You mentioned working on the bunting. Obviously, the bunt ended up winning you guys that sectional game of the walk-off squeeze. And one thing about your team is everybody in the lineup has to bunt and will bunt. Uh, that's kind of like a mentality of your of your group there. Uh, with Oviedo up, you know, even he's batting over 500, but you have him lay down that bunt. What do you think it has taken to, is that a tough challenge to get, I guess, all those guys to buy into that? And then uh, what do you think it takes, I guess, to get that mentality from your team? Well, I think the great group about this, uh, the great thing about this group of young men is is they don't care who gets the glory and they just want to win. And, and, and they know that we preach to them that you got to do your job. And if you do your job, then we'll be successful. And, and getting a bunt down, getting a runner over is part of that doing your job. So, no, they they bought into it. You know, they, they're all great teammates. And, and I tell them all the time that it takes guys 1 through 22 in that locker room to, if we're going to do something special, and it's going to take all 22 of them to win the region. Uh, they all have different jobs, and they all buy into those jobs. And they're all great teammates, and they love being around each other. And so I'm just really fortunate to be able to coach them. Switch over, get into some detail about uh, your opponent coming up in regional 
Jefferson Cougars team that seems like is always there out of uh, Section 2 and just the prestige in the program under John Larry Sr. What stands out about this year's team for them, though, in your mind? Well, I mean, when you talk about the Jefferson program, when, I'm, when I came down here, you know, eight years ago, you, what you heard was Jefferson was a standard, and, and they're still the standard, but I think each year we've kind of been creeping cr- closer to that. Um, I think we've done a great job of, of competing with them, and and uh, when you look at this year's team, I think they have two really good starting pitchers. I think Riley Morgan and, and Colin Rutherford, uh, they're going to provide quite the task for us on Monday and Tuesday, and I assume they'll throw Riley game one and Colin game two. Uh, and we've seen quality pitching all year long, so you know we just got to make sure that we're up for it, and we got to make sure we get timely hits and move runners. And, and I think it's about winning the free base game. You know, both times that we beat them in the regular season, we won the free base game. And if you can win the free base game against a team like Jefferson, you know that's saying something about about what your kids are doing. And kind of said it all year long, you win the free baseball base game, you win the baseball game. And your teams, you know, both sides, you have good pitching on both sides. You would expect close, low-scoring games again. Uh, with getting that those wins against Hedgesville, that kind of helps prepare you, like you said, uh, for that kind of atmosphere. But I'm presuming you're going to go probably Boober and Lane. And of course, you have a lot of options if you have to play a game three as well on both sides. So just uh, how do you feel like the two teams compare, I guess, when you look at um, the depth on both teams' pitching staffs? Yeah, I mean, I think we have really good depth, and I think we have, you know, EPAC uh, Player of the Year and Carson Boober going game one, and I think we have uh, Lane DeLauder, who was first-team All-State pitcher last year, going in game two. So when you look at those two guys in games one and two, we feel really good about that. We have guys like Christian Alter and Owen Rubenthal and Oviedo and Jameer Brown and Ben Risenweber and Parker Robinson. So when you look at our staff, I think we have a really deep staff. And when you go back to talking about winning 30 games, you don't win all those 32 games when you play five a week unless you have that deep pitching staff. And I think that's kind of been the difference uh, between this year and years past is the pitching staff's been deep enough to allow you to win some of those games that maybe you shouldn't have. In your mind, is this, uh, guess, the biggest rivalry for you guys when it comes to EPAC? Uh, yeah, I mean, Jefferson's the standard and, and has been the standard, and we want to be the standard. So when you look at it like that, then then yes, it is. But, you know, we kind of look at things where you got to win your section first. So, you know, Hedgesville and, and us have been, you know, kind of battling for that sectional championship. And, and like I told you, we won four out of six, but we only won one regional, and Jefferson knocked us out those three other times. So, yeah, it's a great rivalry. It's good baseball. Uh, coach Lowry is... You know, obviously the all-time winningest coach in the state and, you know, close to the all-time winning coach in the country. So, you know, we look forward to the opportunity to play them each and every single time out. And, and we just want to prove that, you know, our standard of baseball is just as good. When you look at your team, too, uh, you've had some injuries, but right now you're healthy. You've had some other guys step up. Uh, just like Keegan Everhart, for example, having to lead off for you and then back in the ninth spot and just... Uh, Parker Robinson playing some big games. Just, um, I guess, how have you been able to see guys step up this year, and what does that say about your team as well? Well, I think we have a lot of depth. I, I think, you know, guys like Keegan Everhart and Logan Wilt and Jackson Steen and Parker Robinson, they don't they don't get enough credit. Um, you know, they've stepped in and, and filled voids when, when Isaac was hurt and, and others, and they just do a great job, and, and they're always ready for their opportunity. You know, you take a guy like Keegan Everhart, who was primarily for three years an infielder, and you know he steps up and goes to the outfield when he has to go to the outfield. He steps up, he hit nine fours all year long. He stepped in the leadoff spot and didn't blink an eye. Um, so I think it talks about the confidence that he has as a baseball player, and we have him in him. And uh, like Parker Robinson, you know he came, and got an opportunity, he had you know two or three hits, got the start the next day, and unfortunately pulled his hamstring. And Jackson Steen probably plays one every, you know, probably starts every other day or every day for any team in the EPAC. So he's accepted his role when he gets an opportunity getting in there. And same with Logan Wilt, you know, does a great job defensively and and just proud of him. And, and you don't always get that buy-in from those kids that are, that are you know, kind of on the fence, whether they're in the lineup or not every day. And I think that's what makes this team really special is the, is the buy-in from, from all 22 of them and, you know, just focusing on having one goal as a team. And that kind of goes off of what I think Tripp said the other day on the game. Uh, you know, every team had somebody transfer in, but you guys were the only school that didn't have somebody transfer out. 
So I, I think that says a lot about our program and, and what we're trying to do and what we're trying to build. And we're constantly working. And, you know, I tell our kids, we'll, we'll give you the world. All we ask is that you play really, really hard and be good teammates. I mean, those are the, really the only two rules that we have is that you play hard and you're a good teammate. Um, and, and we try to give our kids everything, you know, under the sun that we can. And, yeah, I'm really, really proud of that stat, uh, to be the only team not to have anybody leave. And, and we hope no, nobody ever leaves our program. Um, and, and that's just what we're trying to do every year is just build the best program that we can build and, and have the best place uh, in the area for kids to play. Coach Byler, my question for you, kind of two-part question. First part is um, how do you make sure the seniors stay focused now that they are at a school and really only going to practice and gearing up for graduation, which kind of rolls over into my second part of the question. Graduation's Tuesday. You guys also play Tuesday, which is at Jefferson at noon because of graduation. So how do you guys prepare, and does it actually affect the players having to go from Monday night playing to then Tuesday at noon playing? Well, to answer your first question, uh, it's no secret that seniors this time of year have a lot of distractions, um, and we have nine of them. And I think so far they've done a really, really good job of handling it. I sat down with them the other day and kind of talked to them like, hey, I know you guys got a lot going on. You got graduation and you're not in school every day. I said, but we have to we have to make sure that, that we have a common goal. And I kind of asked them what their goal was. And each and every one of them said, Coach, I can't think about anything else but, but baseball right now and that regional playoff. Um, so that just gives credit to them and nine fantastic young men that will do great things in life. Uh, be great husbands and and be you know great community members and and just really really proud of them and and, and they'll handle it the right way. Um, as far as the twelve o'clock noon start, we have to you know thank Jefferson for agreeing to play that twelve o'clock game to allow our kids to graduate. So we're appreciative of that. And yeah, it'll be a quick turnaround. Um, we talked to them all year long about how we handle adversity. You know that's one of those things. It's not going to be a typical seven o'clock start. Um, you don't know how things are going to go on Monday night, and then you're going to, you know, they're going to get up, they're going to come to the facility, we're going to feed them, uh, they're going to take some BP, and they're going to go play a game at noon. Uh, so that's that's a little bit of adversity, and we'll have to see how we handle that. But our focus right now is just on Monday night at 7 o'clock and, and getting ready to go uh, by playing a tune-up game tonight, and, and hopefully we get back to, to hitting the baseball a little bit because, unfortunately, I think our bats have kind of – have. Uh, Slumped a little bit, but I think you have to give credit to the pitching at Hedgesville there, and you know we get all the confidence in the world in those guys, and and uh, and they they believe that they're going to get the job done, and then that's half the battle. Colin, you good? Yeah, I'm good. Are you, Coach? Anything else? Hey, just thank you guys for your coverage all year long, and we really appreciate it. Another kids really appreciate you being there.